Good morning, folks. It's been a while since we did a video. Uh, it is July 6th. It's going to be a hot, muggy day today. I hope everybody had a great holiday, by the way. Um, so today we are in a three-car garage. Uh, we're going to be doing a flake floor, and we're going to be putting striping in this floor. So we're going to show you how to do that. I'm going to flip this camera around. I'll show you what we have and what we're going to deal with. Okay, it's a little bright behind me. Sorry about the shadow here. So this particular floor, uh, the steps were removed. The, there was a little slap sink in the corner that was removed. Uh, this floor has joints and these joints are going to remain. Um, in this particular case, the homeowner did not want any cracks in the floor or a chance of any cracks. So they opted to not fill the joints and just leave a joint as opposed to the chance of a crack. We are gonna be coming up the walls. So we're gonna be doing the curb and on top of the wall here, all the way around the perimeter. So we're gonna get our equipment in here, get the diamond grinder in here, get started. Oh, one thing I do wanna point out, I don't know if you can see that, these are called craze cracks. And normally these little cracks are caused when the uh, concrete cures, uh, if the surface dries out too quickly, it's kind of like a dried up mud puddle. Um, it can be caused from either high heat high wind, or accelerators in the concrete. There's many factors that contribute to that. And I obviously don't know what it is at this point, but there's these little craze cracks all over. So by using a primer, we're gonna be filling those little craze cracks with the primer, which is always important to use a primer and that's why we use it. Okay, so we have all our equipment in here. The first thing we're gonna do is cut these joints open. So I have a straight cut wheel. It's a four and a half inch diamond blade. Um, on a cordless 20 volt dual grinder. So I'm just gonna run this down the joints to clean the edges. Even though we're leaving these joints open, I still want the material to bond inside the joint. So I'm just gonna have my vacuum here. I'm gonna hold it behind it. We'll see in detail what I'm gonna do here. Let me start the vacuum. Once again, I seem to always apologize for the same thing. I'm sweaty, I have a nasty headband on, I apologize, it's hot and humid, it's only gonna get worse. So, um, these joints are going to be left open, like we said, but I want the joints to look good. So, you see how this joint was broken out here? I actually cut this out, you kinda of have to look at it like cancer. Uh, so there's a couple little areas along this joint where it was broken out. So we're gonna use that, the 343, the CFS 343 to fill these joints. Um, well, I should say repair these joints. I'm not gonna fill the whole joint. They want them open. So all I'm gonna do is fill these areas with sand, like this, kind of level them off a little bit. And I'm gonna pour the 343 on top of these areas, let it soak in, and then I'm gonna recut the joint with that hand grinder, the same wheel that I just used to clean these out. So that's all I'm gonna do in the areas that I need to repair. Nothing behind me, there's a little one right here. I just want the joints to look consistent when you're done. If you're leaving them open, you know, you want them as straight as possible. Some of these are a little jagged. You surely don't want that visible when you're done. And if you leave it a little high, that's fine. We still have to grind the whole floor. So we're gonna grind right over it and make them smooth. Okay, so we have the, uh, the sand in the joints, and this is a 70 mesh, a 70 mesh sand that we use. I, I know it's gonna be very hard to see, but see how fine that is there? It's a 70 mesh sand uh, that we use in these joints. 
um, to fill them. We'll also use that in wider cracks. So now we have our CFS 343. We're gonna get this out. I have it marked on the bottle, 100 milliliters and 200 milliliters. Um, so now, of course, this is the first pour. Sometimes it can get a bit messy. And look at that, done that before. Here's part A, well, actually part B. Here's part A. Now again, it's gonna be almost 100 degrees today. We gotta move, this stuff does not wait for anybody. So I got one little repair over here on this whole floor. I'm just gonna hit that. That's good. Now the areas with the sand here, I'm just gonna come across here and that's gonna wick right in there. See how that just drizzles down inside there? I'm going to recut these joints after this stuff soaks in and sets. I'm just doing this just to rebuild that edge. Some pet hair there. I'm putting the nose in here on purpose to make a little valley for the epoxy to lay in. Okay, now I'm quickly going to top these off again. It's starting to get warm. set up and recut. All right, so we patched everything with the CFS 343 in the sand, but before I can cut these joints back in here, I'm just gonna run a grinder over this real quickly to knock down the edges. So let me fire up the vacuum. I'm just gonna show you what this looks like and then I'll recut this. Now we grind over the whole floor, we're going to have a nice joint here and we're done. I'll continue doing the rest of this. Okay, now I recut all the repairs here. Now we're going to uh, edge the floor and grind everything. All 
right, so what we did here, Jeff did the first grind and he actually had to turn the grinder down to the speed of four. We're running black diamonds, which is designed for soft concrete and it still really tore this up. So we're dealing with very soft concrete. So I'm gonna flip the camera and I'll show you what we have. Okay, so we still have, I don't know if you can even see this on the camera, it's very hard to see. Um, there's still like some little valleys in here. So we went uh, lengthwise, the direction we ground here. So now uh, we're gonna grind over this one more time in the opposite direction quickly, just to uh, try to get everything evened out. I'll show you the diamonds. These are the, uh, the SACE 40 grit black series diamonds. Uh, so I'll set this up. You know, meanwhile, I'm working on the front edge here. And you can see I still have to clean this up. But that's all ground there. I don't know if you can see the scratch on the concrete or not. It's so bright, all I see is black right now. It's crazy. All right, my apologies. I forgot to turn the camera on when we went perpendicular with the grinder. So you can see the floor now. Jeff is doing the final vacuum. Uh, so I'm gonna set this up on a timeline. So I'll take you for a walk around before we actually coat. Okay, we are all prepped. We did the final cleanup. Just want to show you what we have here. A couple areas we came back with a hand grinder. You can see that scratch in there, but you see the, uh, the craze crack in here. That's all going to be filled up with the primer today. So we have our primer in the shade. I don't know what the temperature is. I'm taking a guess 95 ish. Might even be warmer. But there's our primer, it's gonna be a hot day, so once this stuff is mixed, we gotta move. So we're coming all the way out to the edge, uh, right to here with the primer. All right, one thing we have to do before we start coating is lock these doors up. So I always get these uh, channel lock seat clamps. gap underneath them so when we're done we can drop the door and it won't sit in the wet epoxy so as we squeegee this out you can see how quickly it soaks into some of this concrete because the concrete is very soft so it's patchy already before we even leave which is very common for the prime coat what it's doing is soaking in and at least filling in all those little gaps and penetrating into the concrete Okay, folks, the prime coat is down. It must be 100% humidity. It is absolutely brutal. Uh, we're just going to wrap up today. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to do the uh, intermediate coat of medium gray 707 with the B310 flakes. So we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, folks, welcome back. Day number two. So we primed the floor yesterday with the CFS 707 LVP. 
this particular job, we're leaving the joints open. The homeowner would rather have the open exposed joints than the chance of a crack in a coating. So I'll flip this around, I'll show you what we have. Okay, so this is the prime coat, and I, I always say the prime coat can soak in and penetrate into the concrete, which is what it's designed to do. So sometimes you get this patchy look, which is fine. It did exactly what it should. It penetrates in there, solidifies everything. So now when we put our next coating on, we're bonded to a material that is penetrated into the concrete. So uh, you can kind of see a little bit those craze cracks that were there. Now those are gonna fill in today. So we're gonna put down the CFS 707 now. We're gonna be using a uh, FB310 flake to uh, go over this floor. So that's what we're getting ready to do now. I'll set this camera up so you can watch what we do. One thing I did wanna to mention too, today it's, it's hot already. It's, it's probably 85 degrees here or whatever. When we do um, the installation with the epoxy, once you mix the epoxy in a bucket, you need to pour it out on the floor immediately after you mix. Do not ever work out of a bucket of epoxy because it's going to set on you before you get done, absolutely. So we're gonna mix it, we're gonna pour it down, squeegee it, and then work out of those puddles so it doesn't flash in the bucket. All right, so here we poured out the epoxy, I squeegee it, Jeff rolls perpendicular to the way I squeegee it. Uh, we're back rolling everything and then I immediately come back out and start throwing the uh, flakes on as soon as he's done back rolling. You say I did that perimeter wall first and now I'm doing the body of the floor. So this is a heavy flake. I wouldn't call it a full flake, but it's a heavy flake for sure. As close to a full flake as you're gonna get. Now the homeowner requested that we do not do the apron with flake. So we uh, flaked the whole floor, blew the nose off here with a leaf blower, and then coated this floor with the gray epoxy and put some um, aluminum oxide in. So this is the, the joint you get across here. So I'll give you a quick view of everything. So that's it for today. It feels like it's 95 degrees again. I don't know what it is, but um, so we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to do the CFS 137 MUV. And then we are doing some unique line striping on this after we let this cure for a couple days. Uh, so we'll be back to show you that. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so people always ask how many flake or how much flake do you need for a floor? Well, we just did 660 square feet. Pretty heavy flake. This is the 310. We had 40 pounds. I'm just covering up the owner's name there. And then inside the box, we have about half a box. So we used approximately 20 pounds for 660 square feet, and we still have plenty left over. Okay, good morning, folks. This is day number three. Yesterday, we put down the CFS 707 um, intermediate coat, and we broadcasted the FB310 flakes into the epoxy. So I'll show you what we have. Okay, so this is what we have. We have a fairly heavy flake here, pretty consistent. Now this customer wanted to leave the joints open. They would rather see the joints than have uh, the chance of a crack reoccurring through the coating. Uh, so we're going to vacuum all the excess flake up around here. Um, there's flake, extra flake on the ledge here. Uh, there's also some extra flake on the front apron here and uh, what they had done is they want this front apron a solid gray color so we did not put flake on this and this flake blew in here last night after we after we left it was already set though so we're going to vacuum everything up get it all cleaned up we're going to be doing the clear uh, cfs 137 muv um, clear coat on top of this and go from there so we're going to get set and get moving Okay, so now we're getting ready to do the clear coat. We vacuumed everything. Here's that front uh, apron. A couple specks blew out here. These are just laying on here. So that's your clean apron there. So we're gonna do the clear coat. Joints are open. Again, the uh, homeowner would rather have the joints than the possibility of a crack. 
So we're gonna throw this clear coat down to get these garage doors down. They're calling for rain later. So we're just trying to beat the rain. All right, so I pour out the CFS 137 MUV, squeegee it across. Uh, Jeff is back rolling perpendicular. He also uses the 18 inch roller to pull it up on that vertical just to kind of get it up there. Now I'm gonna use that six inch edge roller and go around the whole perimeter and get that, that knee wall a little bit better. But the 18 inch just carries the material up the wall a little bit easier than using that small roller. I had to mix up a little bit of a second batch there, squeegee that out. And we're just edging everything and the aluminum oxide is out there also and we're done okay folks so now we're back this is actually the following week it's it's monday here we, we were here three days prior last week we let it cure over the weekend uh, now we came back on monday we're going to do the line striping so i love unique projects this is unique they want um, a series of three line stripes in the center of each bay so when they come in they can line up over the line which is definitely unusual. Normally it's on the outside edges. So I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you exactly what we have laid out. And then we're going to do the actual layout on camera here. Okay, so this is the finished floor. This is the medium gray epoxy with the FB310 flake. And then the CFS 137 MUV clear coat. So I'm going to try to show you some texture here. Hopefully you can see this. Um, well, I know you can't feel it. I'm feeling it. But you can see there's some texture there. You need texture on these floors. Here's the front apron. There's water on this. It rained last night. Um, so there's a little water on there. Uh, per the homeowner's request, they wanted the joints open. That way, if the slab moves and cracks, it will crack in a nice straight line. And you just see the joints. And that's exactly what they want. So here's the layout we're going to do. They want six inch stripes on either side with the four inch stripe in the middle. So it's gonna go from the left here, it's gonna go a six inch white stripe, a four inch blue stripe, and a six inch white, white stripe. And it's gonna come straight down the middle of this bay. And here's the other end of it. So we're just gonna connect these lines. Um, and then in this bay here, same thing centered on this saw cut. We're gonna have the three stripes come right down the middle here and stop up against that wall there. So I'll set this up so you can watch us do the layout here and then we're gonna coat, we're gonna do the um, white stripes today and then the blue tomorrow. All right, so I want to record some of this live. When you're doing line striping, when you tape out the, the lines, if you push down on the tape and just push, the tape starts to bubble. So you first have to come down and tap. Tap the tape down so it doesn't move. And be careful so you're doing it straight down. Tap it straight down. After you tap it down, you can take your fingers and go along the edge. And you just want to make sure that edge is nice and tight. So we're gonna do that all the way down here. We have to set the other white stripe on the other side now. Okay, so now we have our lines laid out. So what we're doing is, it's actually off white on the uh, outside, on the left and right, we're gonna be doing six inches of off white all the way down. Now this one we lined up on the saw cut. So that tape is like right on the saw cut all the way down. This one over here, uh, there is no saw cut joint, so we measured from the uh, foundation wall on the left and we came down and we are like right on there. So we're gonna do a real light sand and then I'm going to uh, solvent wipe the six inch stripes and then we're going to apply the urethane, which is over here. The CFS 322 urethane top coat. I always have a towel. I'll throw a towel on the ground 
and we'll wipe our feet when we come in on these floors so we're not tracking too much crap on the floor. So uh, I'll set this up so you can see us do the rest of this. One thing I do want to say, uh, when you're mixing the urethane, in this particular case, I'm mixing it in a bucket and we're working out of the bucket, which is completely opposite of what you do if you're working with epoxy. If you have epoxy in a bucket, it's not going to last long. It's going to set up very quickly. The urethanes you can leave in the bucket and you have hours to use them before they set up. So now I'm going to do a quick acetone wipe and now we are ready to roll. Okay, so whenever we do line striping, you have to be real careful. If you push the material down too hard with the roller, it can wick underneath the tape. So I'm just wetting up this roller now, and, and this is a thinner material since this is a urethane. So I'm just trying to line myself up here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I just do a couple dabs in the middle, and then I'll slowly pull it out from there. I just want to gently go over the line strip. Now, what I'm going to do too is I'm going to let this set on here for a little bit and then I'm going to come roll over it again in probably 15 minutes just to get everything nice and uniform. I'm actually taking some weight off the roller. I'm very gently going up against the tape, so I'm not pushing this under the tape. And we're gonna have to get this vertical edge, well, maybe with a roller. I don't know, I'll try this, or with that brush. I'll try to roll it and see what happens. I surely don't wanna make a mess. Okay, so I continue to roll again very gently, and it's just because it's a textured surface. If I was on a smooth surface, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but because of the flake in the aluminum oxide, it's very easy to get that to bleed underneath the tape. So now I'm actually putting a little more aluminum oxide on and doing a wet roll one more time, and then it's done. Okay, so we coated this. We did a, a, a wet coat. We put a little bit of aluminum oxide in it. We back rolled it again. This is what we have. So we're gonna pull the tape and hopefully reveal a real nice sharp edge. I'm gonna to try to grab all four of these at the same time. stuff at the very ends where you know a little bit bleeds by but if you look at these edges these are really sharp that really turned out nice all right I'm going to do the same thing over here or I'm going to try to it's always nice to have a trash can nearby so when you do this you can see my hands uh, they're very messed up already so Now, whenever you put your tape down too, you leave, leave these ends folded up so they're easy to pick. If you don't, you're, you can't pick with these gloves. You're just gonna rip your glove and make a tremendous mess. So again, this little bit of stuff here, we can wipe up with acetone, which that's part of our dress up process. That was not supposed to happen. Okay.
Okay. For the sake of keeping things clean, I'm taking these gloves off. I'm going to put a new set of gloves on to get the rest of that tape up so I don't track stuff around. Okay, so now Jeff is detailing these ends here, but look at how sharp these edges are. This really, really turned out pretty. So tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to do a blue stripe right down the middle of this. So this is exactly what the homeowner wanted. They want to center the car over the line striping when they pull in. And it's going to be six inch white stripe, four inch blue stripe, six inch white stripe. It's actually off white technically, but uh, that's what we're going to do. So tomorrow when we come back, you're going to see that blue stripe and then we're totally done. Now I do have to say the homeowner did change their mind for line location from when I originally spoke about it previously. Okay, we are back day number five. Um, we did the um, white line striping yesterday. Now we're gonna do blue stripes in the middle of that. So I'm gonna flip this around. I'll just show you in detail what we have now and then we're gonna tape everything up and get the blue in. Okay, so what I wanted to show, when we set this tape, since we're doing a line inside of a line, you see how I'm leaving about a 16th or 32nd of an inch reveal of the white line stripe right there. That way our colors will overlap slightly. If we leave a gap, you're going to see a line where you can see some flake between it. So it's very important that we leave just the slightest reveal of the white and then when we put the blue in there, we're gonna have a solid stripe. So now we have this one set up, we'll do the other one, and then I just have to do the end. Okay, so when we lay these lines out like this, um, you can actually curve the line. The person at the end of the tape holding it has to make sure they hold it square because you can actually curve the tape. So you need to look down it and you can tell the person either pull tight on the right side or left side to straighten the tape out as you do it. Um, it can be kind of tricky because the tape wants to wander on you. Okay, so now we are coming down here with the sanding block. And we actually have, uh, it's one of those foam sanding blocks. We're just coming down lightly to do a real light sand on it. And then I'm going to acid wipe it, or I'm sorry, acetone wipe it. And then we're going to put our coating down. But you see the reveal. On either side, it's about a uh, 16, 30 second of an inch. I mean, we try to keep it as accurate as possible. So that's it. So I'll set this up and then we'll start coating. Okay, so we sanded, we acetone wiped. Now I'll show you what I do here. I always put the uh, the material in this little roller pan. And now I'm gonna wet this roller up. And I always try to keep the pan right at the line or on the tape, so if you drip, at least it's on the tape and not on the floor. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this handle a little bit. What I'm gonna do is just put a couple dabs down here like this. Now yesterday we did a six inch line so I could run right down the middle. If I go right down the middle now, I'm gonna hit those edges and you have to be real, real light. I'm not pushing down at all. I'm just very lightly rolling this out. Real lightly. It's better to go over it like five times light than push too hard and have it bleed under the tape. And we're gonna come back over this one more time anyway as a uh, wet coat. So I'm just kind of doing a light. Light coat over this. This is something you definitely wanna be very patient 
when you do. If you rush this, you're gonna pull the tape and you're gonna have sawtoothed edges and it's not gonna look very good. Nobody wants that. Now Jeff is just gonna take the brush and do the very end that I can't get the roller at. I'll move this camera, turn it, hopefully. Okay, so now we pulled tape. Here is our blue stripe down the middle. On this side. And we did the same thing on this side. Uh, I will admit when we pulled tape, we had a couple little sawtooth things that we had to wipe up and we just used acetone and a rag and we cleaned up the edges with, with that. But this is what we got. Okay, so we're done with another one. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you're watching, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. We appreciate you watching. Tomorrow we're starting another job. Hopefully I can video that and by the end of the week, maybe I'll have that one posted also.